Hey, it's Abdullah and I have a question for you. How do you improve on one of the most iconic and highly rated flagships of all time? According to Nokia back in 2008, the answer was the N96, which had massive shoes to fill as it was succeeding the Nokia N95 8 gigabytes. So did Nokia succeed in creating a worthy successor? And what are all the quirks and features as well as the issues that were relevant for the time for the N96? Let's find out. So let's start with the design. I personally prefer the way the N96 looks over the N95. It just looks cleaner, more cohesive, and a bit more modern. It's still made completely out of plastic, just like its predecessor. And despite being Nokia's flagship, I wouldn't exactly say the N96 felt premium in the hand. On the front, you had a 2.8 inch TFT display with a QVGA resolution. And under the display, you had a very interesting setup where the D-pad is surrounded by music controls. All of the buttons lay flush with the rest of the device, except of the D-pad, which is slightly raised. And sadly, because of how busy this area is, it didn't really feel very ergonomic to use. And of course the N96 had a sliding form factor with a very satisfying sliding mechanism. The keypad had a nice and comfortable layout with nice and clicky feedback on the buttons. And one of the cool tricks it had was the fact that it was a dual slider. So on the other side you had music controls which also doubled as gaming controls when you're playing engaged titles. As for the rest of the hardware, on the right hand side you had the camera shutter key, which to be honest wasn't very clicky and wasn't very ergonomic to use, the volume rocker keys and the dual speakers, one located at the top and one located at the bottom. On the left you had the micro SD card expansion slot, and on the top you had the power on and off switch, the 3.5mm headphone jack and the slide to lock and unlock key. The bottom housed the micro USB slot the charging slot, and the lanyard hole. The back housed a 5 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss optics and a dual LED flash setup. On the N95, the camera was a class leader. Here, the competition had caught up and Nokia opted to go with a slightly smaller sensor than the N95. A very baffling decision, to be honest. Despite that, the phone was still capable of capturing nice looking images. The black glossy back of the device had a really nice pattern which looked quite cool. And one of the coolest aspects was the inclusion of a kickstand integrated into the camera ring. So you could place the device on a table and watch content. Sadly though the processor on the N96 was a downgrade compared to the N95. So it's a dual core ARM9 processor clocked at 264 MHz versus 332 MHz on the N95. Why? Only Nokia knows. In terms of memory, the N96 came with a very generous 16 gigs of internal storage, which was humongous back then. But the biggest feature was the inclusion of a DVB-H transmitter, so you could watch TV on your phone in some markets, which was really cool. As for the battery capacity, once again there is a downgrade compared to the N95, as the N96 shipped with a 950mA battery versus 1200mA on its predecessor. And you could easily remove the back plate exposing the battery. And I really like how clean it looks once you've opened the back plate. From a design point of view, I really like the way the N96 looks. However, it definitely sacrifices ergonomics for aesthetics. So this wasn't everybody's cup of tea. And the glossy finish all over looks nice when it's clean, but it gets dirty very easily and gathers a lot of fingerprints and just doesn't feel very expensive. This opposed to the nice rubbery matte finish on the N95. In terms of software, the device was running on Symbian S60 9.3 released 3.2 with feature pack 2 which is a mouthful. At that point, Nokia had perfected the Symbian formula for this form factor. And just like most other devices, Symbian was a very flexible and very powerful operating system. So it was capable of multitasking, it had a very powerful music and video player, it had turn-by-turn -turn navigation in OV maps, it could play 3D games thanks to its Engage gaming library, and you could even install third-party applications on it. But as I mentioned before, one of the key selling points was being able to watch live TV thanks to the inclusion of DVB-H. So 
what were the biggest issues with the N96 for 2008? For a start, it had a smaller battery than the N95 AGB, which meant that it also had notably worse battery life. The processor on this was slower than the N95, which meant that it performed slightly worse. Its camera sensor was slightly smaller than the N95 as well, which meant that it took worse pictures. From an ergonomics point of view, the design was very controversial, and it definitely felt cheapish in the hand. The phone was also released about seven months after its announcement, which was long even by Nokia standards back then. And finally, the device was really expensive for its time, which is something you'd expect out of an N-series flagship. To conclude, in isolation, the N96 isn't a bad device. But as the successor of one of the most powerful, iconic Nokia flagships, the N96 was a huge letdown. Instead of trying to push boundaries like the N95, the N96 plays it too safe. Cool device just wasn't the worthy flagship we were waiting for back in 2008. At a time where Samsung was making great Symbian flagships like the Innovate, and the iPhone was trying to completely change the game. In my opinion, the N96 was the beginning of Nokia's demise in the flagship segment. Not the biggest disaster, as that specific device will be covered in an upcoming video. But have you guys recognized which device I'm talking about? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, if you've owned the N96, please share your experiences with us, as I'm sure it had a lot of fans back in the day. I know I might sound a bit too harsh on this, but once you go from the N95 to the N96, you'll understand my frustration. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to support me, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying my content, and I shall see you in the next one.